Uh, Mark works for OpenLink, a technology provider on the, the risk side, a treasury and risk management system provider. But we're talking about uh, big data analytics and artificial intelligence. So let's start off with some definitions. So let's start off with uh, maybe big data sure. and then big data analytics and we'll yep. move into AI. So sure. what's a quick definition? Yeah, I, I guess it's always worth uh, defining what we mean by big data and because uh, it can mean a lot of things to a lot of organizations. Um, but certainly, you know, within the, the, the general scheme of things, big data is uh, a data that's structured and unstructured data that sits across different silos. Um, that essentially, if you're able to harness the power of that, um, you can start to uh, better report off that, get more meaningful insights into into that data uh, that you know will help you make uh, um, actionable decisions around that. Um, I think one of the things about you know when we think about big data in the uh, customer insights and things like Facebook and Google and you know they've been making some great strides in terms of getting insights into that kind of data, uh, both structured and particularly unstructured data. Um, <clears throat> but as it relates to sort of corporate treasury. Um, some of the observations that we have had is the uh, um, the siloed nature of data. So there is the data is there. Uh, the real challenge is how do I uh, harness that data? How do I get access to that data? Um, and how do I report on that data? And how do I break down uh, silos from from where that data resides? So examples of that would be you know finance team may have uh, uh, its own data. The, uh, if you're a commodities intensive corporate that is exposed to raw materials and, and, and commodities and things of that nature, you know they have their own separate systems with their own set of data. Uh, and then the treasury teams will have their own data, and then the ERP will have its own data too. And so what you have, the challenge there is getting all of that data in, into, um, into a fashion so that you can actually report on that, get insights into that, and uh, run analytics against that. That's uh, what we perceive as being, which is, it's strange that in this day and age that it's still, still somewhat of an issue. I, I was talking to uh, one of your colleagues there earlier around cash forecasting, why is that? Why is that still an issue? Because it also suffers some of the similar similar challenges in that the data needs to come from many multiple sources and getting uh, access to that single source of the truth has proven to be somewhat challenging. So that's great, so big data is uh, data in lots of different pots and you talked about structured and unstructured data. Structured meaning it's, uh, it's completely arranged, it's in the right format, unstructured may come from outside the company as that's well right. or inside. That, okay. That's right, yeah. And artificial intelligence is, um, how would you define that uh, quickly and, you know? Well, uh, so in its purest form, uh, uh, it's uh, artificial you know, intelligence is machine learning. You know, the machine will learn uh, over time uh, um, what to do and then take over from essentially the human element, right? So if, if you, uh, I, I know there's a lot of conversations going on and where we see it most prevalent, I think, is, is in, in, in FinTech outside of finance and treasury these days, primarily um, you know, uh, Watson is a great example of that, where they're making you know major strides in uh, artificial intelligence that you know can uh, help with cancer studies and cancer research and start to look for optimal treatment uh, options around that. And then, and then the backdrop to sort of AI too is a lot of people nervous. Um, you know, even Stephen Hawking or, or Elon Musk are saying it, it poses some form of existential threat to 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 the nature of what we'll all be doing in 10, 15 five years time um, but as it certainly as it relates to to AI in um, inside Treasury and finance uh, teams these days a lot of uh, there's already components of that that people can use today while not quite machine learning it, it, you can get into things like predictive analysis and stress testing and uh, uh, use historical data to try and uh, fashion outcomes and, and predictors around what could happen under a given set of circumstances and things like that so, so when we think about the bringing this home into the area of risk management, how does bis, big data analytics help with risk management in, in Treasury? What's the, where's the value in that? Yeah, so I mean, look, if, you, if you're able to harness that data, have access to that data, get it into one place, normalize that data, break down those silos between departments inside organizations, whether that's uh, geographic or globally in, in, in that nature, uh, and then be able to delve in and analyze that data um, can give you competitive edges and more insights into what you're doing. So, you know, we're looking at things like, you know, if I can say, you know, what happens or what will happen or what, what, what could likely happen and start to delve into those kind of analytics using uh, a technology and software to do that, that will definitely uh, uh, give uh, people a competitive edge in the business. So is, does this include like a situation of, um, you know, there's a, a seismic event happening off the coast of Japan, uh, tsunami impacts the reactor, uh, the nuclear reactor, 
impact supply chains across the globe, is that an element and an opportunity for big data analytics to help say, who, what customers of ours will be impacted? How will that impact our supply chain? What's the likelihood that that impacts our cash flow or yeah. other activities? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, and that seems like a logical thing to do on the face of it, um, and people uh, undoubtedly are doing that and that type of analysis. The challenge I think that they have is because that all of that data takes time to report on today. So it's not real time, it's not, you know, hey, let's, do, let's run some reports and some analysis on this today and get an answer today so that we can react to that and make decisions based on that, that's been the challenge. And, and I think, you know, uh, um, if you take that example, or even North Korea, you know, is there gonna be a threat of a, a, a nuclear war? You know, I'd be running all sorts of scenario analysis uh, around what, what impacts, you know, where are we exposed to that? What countries are exposed to that? What, what, which of our suppliers are exposed to that? Start stress testing, you know, you got impacts to, you know, whether it's commodities, uh, if you've got impacts to supplier failure, uh, you know, be able to go in and run analysis like potential future exposure uh, against a particular counterparty. Um, obviously FX rates and, you know, how will they move against me and things like that would be, and being able to do that in a real time fashion, I think is, uh, is going to be one of the key components to that. So maybe you could summarize some of the, the, the ways and areas where this impact can exist. So you said potential future exposure, uh, impact on FX rates, so it's a correlation of one event or multiple events coming together, impacting other areas. What are some other examples that would be useful for Treasury to Yeah, to so, know so that kind of you know, cash flow at risk, uh, um, uh, CVA analysis, um, you, you mentioned you know, the correlations. That's a, a, that's a really important component to this. So, you know, oftentimes we'll see people that will run a bar analysis on, say, just FX alone, and in in reality, they're 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 giving up on some um, uh, key components of that. So, what 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 you would really want to be doing is including all your asset classes in that analysis, and that's where you're like commodities or FX or interest rates and things like that. So then you're looking for things like uh, correlation effects against that, um, and that can smooth out uh, uh, and lower risk profiles. You're looking for netting capabilities in that and at the end of the day you know it's very hard to do that I think on the spreadsheet particularly when there's got, you know a large volume of instruments and things like that so that's where technology comes in the ability to be able to to proactively analyze that is important so this idea of leveraging big data what is the current status of that I know there's a lot of ideas we see like you said we see uh, IBM uh, you know leveraging some of that techniques for uh, detecting cancer and, and responding what's the status of leveraging big data analytics in Treasury? Yeah, so I, I think we're um, somewhat in the early stages of that to some degree because I think it's about, you know, where, where there is technology available to solve that today, the challenge is, you know, the cost benefit analysis of deploying that, right? So if, if you take the view that, you know, hey, the Treasury is a cost center, um, uh, so therefore we have to manage costs down and technology is, while important, we got to do the pros and cons to, to, to deploying something like that. But if you take the, the view that strategic is a, or sorry, that Treasury is a strategic enabler to the business, um, then, then maybe you'll think about it in terms of investing in technology to allow you to be able to do that. So I, I still think there's a long, there's a road to go there, uh, um, but there are sort of steps that you can deploy today, and there's also presumably technology that will just really get up to speed on that, uh, uh, you know, uh, automation and, and AI and, and the processes around that. Now, and I know, I mean, I was talking to the AFP folks uh, there recently, um, you know, one, one of the concerns is uh, Treasurer's afraid that, you know, that they'll be replaced. And, you know, my view on that is, um, uh, while I can understand the concern, I think we should all be concerned in any industry or business that we could be replaced by a robot or, or artificial intelligence. I think today, um, you know, the benefit there is that, you know, for the most part, treasury organizations are slimly staffed as it is. And so being able to deploy what we have available today in terms of AI and robotics is only going to make it more efficient, speed up things, get, you know, allow uh, uh, the treasury resources to do, use more of their own heads and make decisions around that by, by utilizing technology that will help them. So do I think tomorrow it's going to replace everybody? No, I do not. And, and Glad to be proven wrong, uh, and I wouldn't be happy about that either. So no, that's good. I think the uh, the, the concept of uh, it helping the process better, and I think of where many companies are today. Many companies are still trying to gather all the data to say where right. are my exposures. Yes, and that's with structured data inside the company, maybe yes. even in the same system. Uh, and now we're talking about you've got to pull in other data to address the risk factor, and that's uh, that's exciting. So I look forward to more discussions on 
big data analytics, AI, uh, this, this, this con confluence of different types of technology that helps you bring and create these, these tools in. I think it's a huge opportunity for more technical, yes. more uh, intelligent uh, operations, less manual activities in Treasury. The, the jobs are going to change. The uh, key punch activity is going to go away because that's going to be gathered. The data is going to be gathered. The, the people that leverage the tool to analysis to analyze it is going to be fantastic. Yeah. Mark, thanks for joining us Thank again you. for this FinTech Hot Seat. Appreciate you. Have a great uh, AFP 2017 conference. Great. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Mm -hmm.